Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at QUTS Hero, the ZFS file system available on some top tier QNAP NAS, in this case the TSH886. Now in today's video we're going to carry on talking about RAID. We've talked about storage snapshots and now I want to show you guys just how quickly this system can build RAID thanks to that ZFS system. The first video uh, we already looked at the system overview and some of the storage potential and we did some RAID rebuilding and RAID resilvering but for now what we're going to do is go ahead and show just how quickly this builds a RAID 5. Now we fully populated the device with uh, 2TB Seagate drives inside you've got those Seagate drives there and we have six hard drives all inside and we do have a RAID group but it's a RAID group concerning the two SSDs for a content creator video coming soon but let's make our way in and show just how quickly this system can build that RAID. So first up, let's build our storage pool. As you can see, ZFS has the advantage of removing a layer from the traditional storage layers found compared with ext 4 This does mean that building these RAIDs will be that much quicker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a RAID 5 using five of these disks. As you can see, there's the RAID 5 there. We do have SSDs inside, but we're not gonna do any caching today. We're just gonna take advantage of those two TB drives. We're gonna click next. We're not going to assign those SSDs. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about over-provisioning or um, any of the guaranteed snapshots. All we're going to do is see how long it takes to build our RAID 5. We're going to click Create. We're going to click Continue. And we're going to let it start now. So we've got the clock running. And we'll see how long it takes for this system in the background to build and synchronize our RAID 5 environment. Let's drop down. Open it up there. It's going to start creating those files and folders as well. We'll leave that running in the background. So, as you can see, the RAID 5 has been completed. Now it's just creating those shared folders. The RAID 5 system, they're in place. There's all of those drives. There is our RAID 5 with the five, five disks. The rest of the time is simply being spent creating those files and folders for it to be available as a volume on the internal system. It really is that fast. Now we can see those SSDs still, so it's gonna minimize that there. And we're gonna flick back to the storage and snapshot area up to 51%. And we have accrued so far one minute, 50 odd seconds. And again, remember, this is a RAID 5. Traditionally, you are talking the lion's share of a day to complete a RAID 5. Maybe not with two TBs, and this is a Xeon-powered NAS, but still, nevertheless, that is pretty breathtaking speed there from that RAID 5 being built. And go back there, go back into it. But the RAID 5, the you know, the sense of the RAID 5 itself, that group has been created there for all of those 2TB drives. We're just gonna let it finish the resynchronization, and after that, what we're gonna do is try out uh, some hot sparing and some RAID 6s. Cool, so we're closing in in the final percent. We're at 100% now of the creation here on the storage and snapshots manager. If we go into file station here and refresh that page, can have a look there, see if it's occurred there in the background. As we can see, it has created our public folder and all the individual folders for that RAID 5. It's nearly done now. It's creating the folders and there we go. I think right now we are past the finish line. We can go ahead, it's been four minutes so far, and if we go into the RAID configuration, we can double check, and indeed, in that RAID group, wrong RAID group there, we can see no synchronization, the RAID is complete. Let's remove the previous disk from that storage pool, but for now, it is all done. And there you go, it has finished, and that was under five minutes, four and a half to be precise, for building a RAID 5, which is pretty substantial. So next up, we want to create a hot spare. We want to see what happens if we create a hot spare on this RAID environment with the drive that remains, and then we're going to pull a drive from the original RAID array to see how long it takes the system to make the swap onto the hot spare. So let's, get, let's create our hot spare now. So 
So there we have, we've created our hotspare there in the background, and this is going to be the drive that's going to be used within that storage pool once we remove a disk. So now I'm going to remove a disk from the middle of the RAID array and see how long it takes the RAID system to adapt and include that new drive. Let's restart the clock, and I'm going to start the clock now and move over and remove a disk. So there's approximately a 10 second anomaly there uh, between removing the disk and me coming back. So I'll have to factor that in at the end. But I've removed disk um, one from the system. So disk one in a moment is going to show that it's unavailable. And the hope is that RAID 6 will jump in and we want to see how long it takes the RAID configuration to adopt this new disk. And as you can see, the RAID group, we can see what the situation is, and it's not even showing degraded. It has automatically incorporated this new disk. It is worth highlighting that this system has is doing this on empty disks. As you see, the rebuilding has finished, and it has adopted this brand new disk. And now disk one has been completely ignored, and the new disk interjected into it. We barely even needed the clock in the first place. I'm just going to quickly reintroduce that drive. And of course, it is worth bearing in mind that when doing this, we are using empty disks. And full disks may take a fraction longer, but thanks to ZFS, it won't actually take that much longer. So there is that disk, and now we can choose whether we want to incorporate it into the RAID or if we want to go ahead and create it a hot spare. But what we're going to do now is we're going to delete this RAID pool, and then from there we're going to see how long it takes the system to build a RAID 6. Right, so that storage pool has now been removed. So let's go ahead and time how long it takes this system to build us a RAID 6. We've got the clock reset. Let's go into the storage and snapshots area, click manage. And we're going to go for a create, my bad. We're going to create a brand new storage pool. Once again, we're going to go all the way through the same steps. This time, we're going to create a create a RAID 6 with all of those disks inside. And this RAID 6, by the way, is going to be useful in our next video where we're going to talk about RAID rebuild sp speeds uh, on a ZFS platform. But for now, let's click Next. Uh, we're not going to worry about the SSDs. We're not going to worry about over-provisioning. We're going to see how long it takes for us to build this RAID 6 environment. We're going to click Create, and then we're going to click OK, and then get the clock, and click Start. So once again, we're going to time it until it gets to 100% uh, for this RAID 6 storage pool. We're not going to muck around too much with FileStation or all the other options, because we know uh, when the storage pool percentage figure here reaches even 20%, the RAID 5 as a storage area will be complete. The full RAID 5, um, uh, RAID 6 configuration we're doing here is to include all of those folders and all the extra stuff. Given that a RAID 6 will typically, on a NAS of this power, still take somewhere between six and eight hours, even on two TB drives, due to the complex nature and double parity of a RAID 6, it's gonna be interesting to see how long it takes for this system to build this RAID 6 environment, given we're already at 20% complete. Let's fast forward. Right, so we've got the folders there created in the background. We're just fast forwarding a little bit further along, seeing how long it's gonna take for it to do the rest. As mentioned, we've already got the disks created there in the background. Um, into that RAID group. So the RAID group is done and all synchronization is done in the background. Now it's just a question of all of the background stuff such as aligning those applications and folders there in the background. We're just shy of four minutes. It took the RAID five, four and a half minutes. So I think this is going to take a pinch longer. Uh, but even then, uh, the idea that a RAID 6 is going to take minutes, not hours, is still pretty bloody impressive and we have to give it credit for that. And there you go, the RAID configuration is done. If anything, it took a little bit quicker 
than that RAID 5, which is quite impressive, which to me suggests that the fact that the RAID configuration and the extra drives and parity in the way it's calculated in ZFS is still pretty impressive overall. So again, I think this has been a nice little video to show you guys just how quickly the system can build a RAID 5 and a RAID 6 environment on the ZFS platform. I know we've already run a test like this before with resilvering, but I do think it's worth introducing the idea in a RAID 6 that resilvering is indeed an option. So what we're gonna do is quote unquote accidentally remove a couple of drives from this configuration like so And because this is the RAID 6 configuration, we can afford to lose two disks in this RAID environment in terms of parity data. But what we're going to do is reset the clock there. We're going to give the system a minute just to recognize the fact that it has lost two drives in its RAID array. As you see here, it's mentioned that there are disk issues here. If we go into the disk warning, we go for it there. The system has already started noticing that drives have gone. It's noticed that drives are being disconnected. Oh, this is refreshing there, even I even have to refresh the page. And that first drive got noticed first, and now disks one and four have been removed, although we can, of course, still interact with our data because this is a RAID 6 environment. Um, and then I'm going to introduce these drives. Now, normally on an EXT4 setup, what would happen is even if you reintroduce those drives as they are, they wouldn't be visible, and you would need to treat them as they are blank drives and rebuild your array configuration. Um, but what we're going to do is reintroduce those drives like so. And then we're going to start the clock. We'll leave that to reintroduce uh, those drives into the RAID array, which should still be showing as degraded. But degraded still means that the drives can still be accessed. And as you can see, it's noticed disk fourth first. It should also notice disk two shortly. And then the system is going to start rebuilding. As we can see, uh, the disks there, there's disk four, and it's noticed disk two as well. This one has been detected and the system has rebuilt. And that was in 30 seconds. If we go back, we can go into the RAID group. So wrong RAID group. There's our RAID 6. There's all the six disks. It's that straightforward. In our next video, we will be looking at filling this RAID with multiple drives just to show you one of the uh, benefits of ZFS with regards to RAID rebuilding in that it won't build the entire drive. It'll only rebuild the amount of data that was on the disk to start with, thereby making RAID rebuilds a great deal quicker. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do visit the link in the description to NAS Compares for the full review of this NAS as well as my other videos on QTS. And of course, if you are interested in buying a NAS, do visit the guys at span.com. I will see you next time.